So we're here with Zainab Salvi. Zainab is an old friend. Uh, we talked when we did the episode in Morocco. Uh, she is kind of plugged into various networks of millennial activism. So I was really curious about what you're doing. You're doing this exciting talk show uh, in the Middle East where, you know, you're addressing all these huge issues. And I was curious, you know, what you're hearing from what you might call millennials in the Middle East. It's an interesting environment because it's traditional, it's cultural, you still, you know, kiss the parents' hand or sort of like that, you have to show respect to all of these things, much more than, let's say, in America. Um, but in the meantime, they're having a new source of identity, which is global. Because, I mean, a lot of countries in the Middle East did not have access to the internet until 2003, 2005, you know? There was no cable TV or satellite TV to get, like, whatever number of channels until early 2000s. So we're talking about a very new generation and the discrepancy between them, you know, who are more aware, who are more connected to the world, who are saying, I'm a global citizen, who know, like, what you're doing or saying, it, the gap between them and their parents is huge. Mm -hmm. Their parents grew up with one TV channel and no internet and no any western newspapers or magazines in most of the middle eastern countries you know so it's a very interesting identity shift that is happening they're divided between those who are trying to see who are seeing themselves as global citizens um, and yet they are rooted in the middle east and between frustration that there are no employments there's like 40 percent of unemployment in the region 60 percent of the population are under the age of 30 so there's a big frustration, no um, freedom in terms of, you know, sexual expression or any of that. So it's it's an interesting population. I feel it's like it's stuck uh, between a, you know, what do you call it, between a rock and a hard place, you know, yeah. trying to define themselves, who they are in the midst of a very shifting region between radicalism and the other side is not liberal necessarily. It's sort of conservative, non religious you know but their voices are fantastic they're courageous they're beautiful they are uh, artistic creative all of these things it's just it's tough times for them I, I really feel bad for the Millennials in the Middle East so what is this Millennial Project so the Millennial Project is a show all about drawing out refining and activating a unique Millennial voice in American politics mm. and so I know you had asked me before a little bit about what a Millennial is uh, and I think a lot of millennials don't even know what a millennial is. So in general, it is people who were born from 1980 to 2000. Okay. So basically 15 to 35 year olds. Uh, there's about 80 million of us running around the wow. United States today. It's the largest generation in American history. Uh, the generation tends to skew left of center, mm -hmm. but it's also a generation that is weary of political titles. Do they vote? Do the millennial population vote? We Are don't have active? a very high voter turnout. I mean, it's really interesting because millennials were integral in getting Obama elected in 2008, um, but they kind of tapered off and didn't come out as as strong in 2012. And so, you know, we can be this really huge political force, 80 million people, yeah. if we had a different set of political ideas, we could leverage our, you know, our, our numbers to produce real change to you know to determine elections especially because our elections currently are you know won on such small margins so if you think about like the 2012 election you know it was within you know a few percentage points that the vote really mattered so if you could get millennials out in local elections in state elections in national elections and they had a cohesive set of ideas, they could tip the balance in favor of one party or the other. And that makes us potentially a very powerful political force. But are the millennials aware of that and do they use that? I don't think so. I don't think millennials are aware of the numbers and the potential power that we have as a generation. How about international politics? Are the millennial generation interested in international politics and what's happening in the world? I think people are interested in what's happening in the world, but I don't know how engaged people are. That's a bad thing. But I think, you know, I think millennials want a more global centric coverage. One of the things that I've kind of come come to in trying to think up and, and refine this show idea is trying to figure out what are the millennial generation's kind of coming of age political experiences. So a lot of generations have, you know, their big events that define their political outlook. You know, there's like the Vietnam era, and a lot of people who were kind of coming of age in that era refer back to Vietnam as like 
the mm. you know one of the major things that kind of dictated how they think about the world. Sure. For us, I think it's predominantly 911 because you know it was like we grew up in this safe 90s world where it was like oh you know everyone's happy and good mm. and like the economy's growing and then suddenly like 911 happened and mm. it was like we need to figure out what's going on out there and I think on top of that you know you have the advent of the internet and you know you have this generation that whether it likes it or not is connected with people in all places all the time uh, and I think that means that our interests when it comes to media coverage are going to be more global mm -hmm. and so that's something I'm excited about that is pretty cool actually what are some of the discussions you're going to have in the show okay so we are doing a bunch of cool stuff in 2016 okay. um, right now I am editing two videos one is on Reagan and the future of the Republican Party. Uh, Reagan? Reagan, because I was just, I've been watching all these debates and this just insane Republican political field right now. And they always are talking about Reagan. And they're always talking about how we need to make America great again. And there's this kind of attitude, like, if we just had a guy in there who would just say what he believed and, like, you know, do this thing, you know, the way it should be done, like Reagan did it, you know, it would all be good. And I was like, I don't know if that seems to make a lot of sense. So I went to the Reagan Library, which happens to be located right outside L.A., and they were really receptive to the idea of kind of having someone talk about Reagan on Reagan's terms rather than on political terms in, in the Republican election mm, today. Interesting. Um, and so I went out to this library with the intention of not kind of chastising Reagan. I didn't want to be like Iran-Contra, you know, the economy wasn't as good as he said it was. But what I wanted to do was get an idea of who Reagan was on the terms of the Reagan Library and then see if that matched up with what Republicans today say Reagan is. But I think uh, it, it's that's kind of the notion is, is to is to go to places to investigate things on a genuine level, um, to not chastise people. It's not about like getting the moment on camera when they're gonna be like, oh my God, I had an affair with my secretary. Cause like that doesn't move the larger political dialogue Correct. forward. But I think what does move it forward is when, when you go somewhere, you talk to someone, you allow them to confide trust in you that you're going to tell their story the way they want it to be told, and then you try to use that to move. You know, to move the dialogue forward and just say like, hey, if you were my friend and I asked you a question and you told me something, how would that enhance my understanding of the world? Mm -hmm. And like sometimes, obviously, you know, even with friends, you have to be like, well, maybe they're a little bit crazy, or like maybe that didn't, maybe that doesn't really make sense. But I think. On, a, on an initial level and as an initial outlook for the show's editorial side of things, the goal is to just say, you know, we're going to talk to people, hear what they have to offer, and, and take the best and kind of strip out the worst and move forward. That's pretty cool. So it's a major election year. Yep. Um, what's your message? What do you want the millennials to know and to do? I mean, you you have a call out? I think that... I think my call to action for millennials would be, again, we have a huge number of people in our generation. We have the shown ability to differentiate from what you might call traditional political associations. You know, we're not just going to sit there and be Democrats or Republicans because our parents were because, you know, that's what they tell us we should be. So with that in mind, we have the ability to tip the balance of the election. We did it in a lot of ways in 2008. We could do it again in 2016. I, it's really a question of if you want to vote and if you do go out and vote. But beyond that, it's a question of, you know, being able to make a connection with a candidate that seems to really genuinely reflect your personal beliefs. And so my my thing with this election is not to say you should vote for Hillary or vote for Trump, but, you know, to remember that they're politicking and they're out there, you know, saying whatever they need to say to get to the next stage of the election. And, you know, to really give it a second thought, you know, try to not be convinced by the emotional kind of baiting that they do and the fear mongering. And, you know, remember that while politics is very emotional for you and for me on an individual level, on a larger level, it's very scientific. And it can be, you know, these are policy issues with mechanical policy solutions. And what we need is someone who can go into the, that office and who can, yes, do the politicking and rally the country and be, you know, the kind of political center as a personality of the United States. We also need someone who can actually go into that office and who can begin addressing these problems. So, you know, it's like, my thing is to say, you know, look at everything twice, try not to be emotionally baited, and, you know, just enjoy it, have fun, go out there, go to rallies, see what these people are saying. If you like the person, you like them. If you don't, move on. But no, I mean, it's, that's pretty cool, actually. I mean, I, it's, it's pretty cool. You're presenting the discussion from a different perspective. Try. And you're saying we are much more sophisticated and knowledgeable and intelligent than people think that we are as a generation. And 
you're gonna try to explore different su subjects as the millennials would wanna hear it. I'm gonna watch your show. I'm gonna watch your show too. <laughs>